Today we're gonna to talk about a common question that I get asked as a registered dietitian. Do specific foods burn fat? It's no secret that nutrition plays a vital role in our health and well-being and even our body composition. But can food actually help us burn off that extra layer of fat that we're trying to lose or make us thinner just by eating it? We're gonna get into that today. To start off, I hate to disappoint you, but there really is no magic pill, whether it's food or a literal pill that you get at the store that will burn or incinerate fat for you. And honestly, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Food is meant to give us life and energy so we can go about our daily lives doing our thing and feeling relatively good while we do it. If we if we didn't have enough energy to fuel our day, it wouldn't be a good thing. No matter what, when it comes down to it, fat loss occurs when we eat less calories than we consume. So whether that's from a combination of exercise and diet or just diet alone, we have to be in a calorie deficit to see weight slash fat loss and there's no magic pill way around that. That said though, certain foods can definitely support fat loss by boosting our metabolism, giving our body the vital nutrients it needs to allow our metabolism to function properly and also helping us feel full. Example number one of this is protein. Eating a diet high in protein can help us feel fuller for longer, which again can passively assist in helping us lose fat. Protein actually requires more energy for our body to digest, absorb, and metabolize than the other two macronutrients fat and carbs. And let's back up for just a second. Did you know that when we eat food, it actually takes our body energy to digest that food. So when you're eating food, you are actually inherently burning calories because that's what our body needs to do its thing. And this is what we call the thermogenic effect of food. So when food goes into our system, we chew it, we digest it, and then we absorb and metabolize it to use it for the nutrients and the energy that it contains, that all takes energy from our body or ATP. And according to studies, protein can take up to three times more energy than carbs and fat to digest and process. Good sources of protein include things like beef, chicken, eggs, Greek yogurt, tofu, and even combination foods like beans and lentils, which also have carbs, contain protein. Let's talk about another common fat burning food that we see in the media and even kind of the diet supplement industry. I see this a lot, chili powder. You might hear this promoted different ways, whether it's chili peppers, chili powder, capsaicin. Essentially what they're referring to is anything that contains the spicy compound capsaicin, which makes our tongue feel hot when we eat foods. The capsaicin in chili powder actually has been shown to have some metabolic effects, including increasing your metabolic rate and increasing fat oxidation. But is it all it's really hyped up to be? I'm not so sure. Even though it has been shown to have these effects, usually they are very short-lived. So think when you consume something spicy, probably initially you feel that on your tongue and you might also feel it in your belly when your body is digesting it. But just because you had some nice spicy Thai food doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing the equivalent of a workout. Usually the maximum benefit that we've really seen and even scientific studies that this food has on our metabolism is about three to eight percent of an increase in metabolic rate and again it's for a very short-lived period of time so it's not just like infinitely you were burning eight percent more calories the entire day it's probably simply for the time that you are digesting it. Again, we often see capsaicin in fat burning pills and stuff like that so you can get a more concentrated amount and then they argue that this is going to work better because it's going to have you burning calories for a longer period of time with a higher level of capsaicin. But I really don't typically recommend having any sort of fat burning pills for that matter because the supplement industry is quite sketchy when it comes to 
pills that promote things like that. But not only that, even if you get a GMP certified supplement, I don't recommend it because I see potential for harm when you are digesting that level of concentrated capsaicin. Say, God forbid, it got stuck in your throat for any sort of reason, you would have quite literally a burning hole in your esophagus. And say it didn't do that and your life isn't a worst case scenario montage like my brain is. I could see this having some negative effects on your GI tract once it gets to your stomach or your intestines and causing some GI discomfort, potentially diarrhea or just an upset stomach or potentially contributing contributing to more stomach acid. And these are all hypotheses from my own brain, not necessarily scientific studies. That's my own opinion, but let me know what you think in the comment section below. So next up we have caffeine containing foods and beverages. So caffeine is well known to be a stimulant and a stimulant does typically bring up your metabolic rate inherently. And coffee is good for a lot of reasons, but is it going to make your metabolism super high? To some extent, yes. But again, this is not a cure-all or a fat-burning method that you should be using to replace a healthy diet. Consuming regular amounts of caffeine can increase your metabolic rate anywhere from three to 11% increase. It has also been shown not only to help burn more calories, but also helps with fat oxidation. So as you can see, there are some potential benefits here. Caffeine in coffee and green tea also contain antioxidants, which is, is not a bad little bonus here. <laughs> coffee has also been shown to be a good ergonomic aid in different scientific studies where individuals who are athletes or runners or weightlifters had coffee before a workout and actually saw improvements in their workout. So you can say that coffee is kind of a twofold benefit. It increases your metabolic rate, your fat oxidation, and also helps improve your energy expenditure passively by helping you feel more energy to go out and go on a walk, go on a run, or lift more weights. I mean, you're typically not sitting down and doing nothing when you have coffee. Actually, sometimes you might because you might be a college student or you might be someone who is uh, creating content like I did for this video here and you're sitting on your butt all day drinking coffee. But all of that to say, caffeine does have its benefits and can temporarily increase your metabolic rate. So sure, if we wanna call coffee, caffeine, and even things like green tea, fat burning, in a small sense, sure, I'll give it to you. <laughs> we can't have me bashing on every single thing I talk about here, right? But I think it's really important and of course my ethical due diligence to point out that just chugging coffee all day is not necessarily a healthy thing. In fact, the upper level for caffeine is about 400 milligrams. So try your best to kind of stay below that number. That probably looks like a couple cups of coffee, two to four cups per day. Coffee and caffeine can have a significant effect on not only your digestion, but also your anxiety and jitteriness. So if you are prone to anxiety, then you may wanna stay on the lower end of caffeine per day. Caffeine can also have an appetite suppressing effect, which some people can use and abuse. So if you have these tendencies, make sure again to monitor your caffeine intake. And one last thing, one last note on caffeine is that it can interfere with absorption of things like iron and other essential nutrients. So again, just one more solid reason not to overdo it on coffee or caffeine. So to answer your question, do specific foods or drinks burn fat? Yes and no. Remember, food is designed to give us energy, not take away the energy. That would be a bad thing for the human species if it did. So remember that when you're having coffee or your favorite hot spicy Thai food or your favorite Greek yogurt. All in all, having a variety in your diet is gonna be the best way to manage your weight and have an overall healthy metabolism, diet, 
blood sugar, and all of the fun stuff. I hope you learned a thing or two from this video and let me know in the comment section below what questions you want me to answer in the future and what other nutrition myths do you have for me that you think I should bust in a future video? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this video and wanna see more like it. And if you wanna keep hanging out with me here on YouTube, then click or tap the screen to head on over to the next video.